Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions will come to order. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today for the fourth in a series of hearings focused on the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. In our committee hearing on Tuesday, we focused on the challenge of turning around <laughs> underperforming schools. Today, we turn our attention to the professionals who are on the front line in our public schools, our teachers and our principals. Okay. We'll explore some of the key challenges to be tackled in this reauthorization. How do we attract and retain a highly qualified teacher for every classroom, as well as talented uh, leaders <coughs> for every school? How do we best prepare them to be successful in the classroom and as leaders? How do we support them in their work and continually increase their effectiveness as practitioners? Lastly, how do we evaluate the skills and strategies that lead to student achievement? These questions are so central and multifaceted that we have chosen to use a roundtable format for today's hearing. Uh, I hope this will allow for more voices in the discussion as well as a more robust exchange of ideas. While many factors are important to a student's success in school, let's state the obvious when it comes to learning, a good teacher matters the most. And when we look at chronically underperforming schools across America, one all too pervasive problem is that these schools have too many teachers with inadequate training and skills. It's a cruel fact of life that too often our most needy and at-risk students are being taught by our least prepared and least able teachers. In core academic classes nationwide, teachers with neither certification nor a major in the subject they teach are twice as common in high poverty schools as they are in high income schools. A key challenge is to identify strategies for ensuring that students who need the most help are being ed educated by our most effective teachers and principals. The only way to know for sure whether students have effective teachers and principals is by having in place a reliable evaluation system that takes into account student achievement along with other important measures of success. <clears throat> that would allow us to identify educators who need help to reward those who are doing a great job at improving student achievement. Because this is so important, today's roundtable includes leading experts on teacher evaluation. I look forward to hearing your views because it's something that has bedeviled me for a long time. How do you evaluate a teacher? Is it by the test scores of the students? Well, that could be just rote memory. Is that all we want to do is to impart rote memory on kids? Or do you want to really teach them how to learn and how to ask probably just a simple answer on a test? Another key challenge to increase the quality and relevance of teacher preparation programs and ongoing professional development. It's a dismal fact that nearly 50% of our teachers leave within the first five years. And I was asking Ms. Moore about that just before we started here. Who are these 50%? Who are they? And why are they leaving in the first five years? Are these the best and the brightest going out, or are these the ones that can't hack it at all? Who are they? I tend to think it's the former, just from my own anecdotal experience. That it's those that are the most aggressive, the brightest, who want to really see a career ladder, but they don't see it in the first five years and they're out because they've got other choices. They've got other choices. One big reason for the attrition rate, I think, is, is, that, is that we're failing to adequately train <laughs> teachers for the tough realities of the job and to ensure that they have a strong grasp of the content areas they're teaching. Of course, we can't talk about support for teachers without emphasizing the importance of excellent instructional leadership. Teachers can be at their best when they have a principal who fosters a school culture where student learning is a common goal and where educators have ample time for collaboration. Uh, again, anecdotally, I, I remember one school in a city in Iowa had a lot of problems. Truancy, it was just, it was in terrible shape. They got a new principal and literally within two years that school turned around. And the only change was the principal. That was the only change. So from that, I, re I remembered that and I thought, boy, there's something here about leadership uh, at that level. <clears throat> Finally, it's important to note that while teachers and principals on the front line are the most important factors in helping our kids to succeed, they can't do it by themselves. We <coughs> must all be partners in the education and success of our children. And here I would emphasize our parents and how they're involved in this process. Well, these are tough questions. There are no simple answers. If there were, we would have done it a long time ago. Uh, but simply because it's tough doesn't mean that we can't be about it. And I think the reauthorization of this bill, uh, if nothing else, we've, we've got to focus in this area of, uh, of 
qualified teachers, professional development, career development, <clears throat> leadership training qualities for our teachers and for our principals, uh, and getting those into our, our most underperforming schools. Well, with that, uh, I will invite now my colleague, Senator Enzi, to share his opening.